Hi, my name is Pauline Riusse, and I am a member of the scientific staff at the Office of Technology Assessment at the German Bundestag, the German Parliament, and I'm very happy to share my insights on scientific communication and scientific policy advice at TAP. So from where I stand, the greatest challenge is really to catch up with a massive amount of information and scientific papers that is published each day. Each day. So last year, for instance, in 2021, um, about 300,000 papers were published solely in the field of artificial intelligence. So finding the most relevant pieces of information and making sense of it all, um, while uh, still um, trying and using windows of opportunities to inform uh, public discussions can be extremely challenging. So I think one opportunity that will become more and more important in the coming years um, is data analytics. There is a number of software that can help us um, as scientific advisors um, to uh, follow and quickly grasp new insights and discussions that take place um, in research and uh, innovation communities, but also to see and better understand how they are perceived and discussed in the media and even social media. So not all of these uh, tools are uh, yet uh, mature enough or even enough transparent for us to use uh, them, but some of them are and uh, some of them will. Um, so being at the forefront methodologically, making the best out um, of these innovative digital tools um, is really an opportunity that we have to seize in the coming years to better identify and communicate um, the state of science to parliamentarians, to politicians, policymakers in a timely manner. Um, another opportunity that I see is for scientific advisors to come down from the ivory tower. So to me, producing um, papers and reports is of course an important and a necessary condition, um, but it's not a sufficient one to make sure that scientific advice informs decisions. So I think what we need is to work hand in hand um, with decision makers to deliver scientific insights and turn them into workable outputs. So for years, we've uh, focused especially on making the best science that we can, um, yet some reports, some studies have not had the impact they could have had. Um, and in part, I think it's because um, it's not sufficient anymore to deliver high quality scientific publications. It's becoming more and more important to make sure that the scientific insights gets delivered in the right uh, format and in a timely manner to the um, relevant persons. So in our case at STAP, it means um, to shape the boundary between science and policy and create rooms within parliament uh, to reflect about possible and desirable futures in a structured and uh, evidence-based manner. So in the past, uh, one major task of TAP was to dig out information, um, uh, very specific information to answer the needs um, of parliamentarians. What I have observed um, is that uh, obviously everyone has access to information nowadays um, very easily. So the problem is not to find answers to specific questions anymore. It's not to lose sight of the big picture. So one danger for decision makers and even for their advisors is to pick the information that confirm their beliefs and justify the things that they wanted to do anyways. So our task uh, as TAB is to collect information in a comprehensive and balanced manner and uh, frame it in a way that uh, parliamentarians um, can um, use. And I think that um, this has become more important than ever. A genuine task of the TAB is to map controversies, to shed light on their scientific and technical underlines, to uh, make assumptions transparent to point at uncertain knowledge 
um, and uh, make the social political context um, understandable. So in the context of massive information and disinformation that we live in, I think this task has become more important than ever. So what is becoming more and more uh, valuable is also the ability to bring this information to the right person and to transform it into valuable strategies. So our modern societies have to transform infrastructures, the way we produce, the way we uh, consume, facilitating the flow of information in particular, pointing at the possible consequences, um, desired or undesired of decisions or non-decisions, um, this um, should be one major task of scientific advisors. So um, it is in the end about navigating the ocean of information together. As my colleagues uh, Otmar Inhofer and Martin Kovach uh, wrote, it is our task um, as scientific advisors to map um, the realm of opportunities and to act as map makers um, in order to show what um, consequences decisions may bear. There is a long tradition in science to clearly separate science from politics. Um, we scientists generate the insights, Policy, politicians have the responsibility to do something out of them. Yet decades of research on scientific policy advice um, has clearly shown that this makes our life easier, but it does not necessarily um, help um, our impact. So on the contrary, the danger is big that the science will get lost in the ocean of information, misinformation that was women. So at TAB, we engage in a joint uh, process of selecting research topping and framing research projects together with parliamentarians. Political parties and parliamentary committees suggest the topic, we then evaluate the feasibility, we should bite on challenges and opportunities and suggest a project design. So the parliamentarians who uh, prepare the decisions of the Committee on Research, uh, Education and Technology Assessment then have to come to an agreement um, on about a list of topics that they all consider to be the most relevant. So of course, not every research organization has a clear target audience as we do. Yet I do think that uh, what we need is not only research of great quality, but it's also a strategy about how the insights uh, are supposed to change the status quo. As I worked um, a few years ago for international uh, organizations evaluating the impacts of their work, um, I observed that those reports that impacted their target audiences the most were those ones where the project teams um, had identified impact channels, had involved policymakers and multiplicators very early on in the project and had given them the opportunity to ask question and uh, frame um, the project. Um, so for us at TAB, it also means that we have to constantly reflect about whom to involve in our work, when and how. So this means using methods from the Agile and Foresight Toolbox to support decision makers in constructing desirable futures, identifying contradictory objectives, and designing roadmaps to implement solutions. So to be able to make our research impact decision making, uh, we will not only need excellent scientific skills, but also facilitation skills which means um, a professional form of interpersonal uh, expertise that supports scientists in doing their best thinking, as Amanda Gravens uh, and teams wrote uh, recently in a paper published in Nature. So we will need individuals in our teams um, that are able to span the boundary between science and policy. Individuals who can create comprehensive and inclusive knowledge exchange processes. They do not necessarily have to be the ones that do the science, but they have to um, be able to facilitate diverse viewpoints, to navigate complex sociopolitical systems, 
um, and to hold the tensions of opposites, um, which means, um, in the word of uh, Brene Brown, which means acknowledging that two things can feel competing and conflicting, but can both be true at the same time. And these skills are essential for good scientific communication because spanning these paradoxes, these conflicting visions of the future has the power to transform the way decisions are made to the better. Thank you very much. <laughs>